call this meeting of the North City Council Finance Committee to order. Uh, members present are uh, Mr. Lang in the place of Mr. Marmy, uh, Mr. Bubb, Mr. Cost, and myself. And then uh, when Councilman Frazier uh, comes, we'll make note of that in the record. Uh, we do have uh, two pieces of legislation on our agenda tonight. Uh, the first piece is to consider resolution number 1888, appropriating monies for the current expenses of the municipal corporation. This is an expedited piece of legislation. The first section of this um, piece of legislation is the appropriation of the unappropriated balance of 621 Water Department Fund in the amount of $24,937.50. And it looks like Mr. Rath is going to be submitting it for Mr. Frazier, uh, just for the record. Uh, and I see Mr. Uh, Loomis is at the podium. Yeah, this is an interest payment on uh, the uh, note that we have for the downtown uh, project. Uh, since it's a note, we're never sure what the interest rate's going to be until we renew it. And, uh, and so the payment's due December 1, so we were just were short on the budget on this, and that's, that's what this is. So. Motion. Motion by Mr. Bob. Second. Second, Mr. Lang. Any questions or comments from the committee? Questions or comments from the audience? There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, move this on to full council. Signify by saying aye. 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 Close same sign. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Loomis. A section two of this piece of legisla legislation is hereby an appropriation of the appropriated balance of the 153 compensated absences fund in the amount of $30,500 uh, pay out to Tom O'Reilly. Uh, Mr. Moorhead's at the podium. Yes, thank you. This is a uh, retirement for Tom. Uh, he retired last Wednesday on the October 31st, so these are his payout numbers. Motion. Motion, Motion Mr. Bubb. Second, Mr. Cost. Any questions or comments from the committee? Questions, comments from the audience? Seeing none, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor of moving this on to full council, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moorhead. Uh, section 3 of this legislation is hereby an appropriation of unappropriated balance of the 100 general fund in the amount of $6,272. It's the city match to assistant firefighters grant. Yeah, this is our AFG local match. Motion. Uh, motion, Mr. Bubb. Second. Second, Mr. Lang. Any questions or comments for Mrs. Skilks? Any questions or comments from the audience? Seeing none, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor of moving this on to full council, signify by saying aye. 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 Close same sign. Motion carries 5-0. Is that one? In section four, there is hereby an appropriation of unappropriated balance of the 297 Fire Safety Grant Fund in the amount of $69,000. This is the other part of the equation. Um, our recent award, uh, the bulk of it will be going for radios and affiliated equipment for those radios. And the $13,045.53 is for a washer dryer extractor for the PPE uniforms for station two. Okay. Uh, motion, Mr. Cost. Six. Second, Mr. Lang. Questions or comments from the committee? Questions, comments from the audience? Seeing none, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor of moving this on to full council, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we do have a section 5. There's a hereby an appropriation of unappropriated balance of the 100 general fund in the amount of $16,000 equipment for a detected vehicle. This is light siren for an unmarked vehicle taken from the seizures and forfeitures that has been accrued by the police department over the course of the year. Thank you, Director Baum. Is there a wish of the committee? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. So it's not a detected vehicle, it's to vehicles no it's not for a car it's for accessories for a car uh, and it's money that they've used or money that they've seized or been given in judgments of forfeitures throughout the year they want to turn that money back around and use it to put lights and sirens on unmarked vehicles gotcha. motion 
Motion by Chair Mr. Bubb, second Mr. Cost. Any further questions or comments from the committee? Questions, comments from the audience? Seeing none, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor of moving this on to full council, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Thank you, Director Vaughn. <coughs> Section 6. There is hereby an appropriation of unappropriate balance of the 621 Water Department Fund in the amount of $5,000. Uh, Mr. Williams. Yeah, this is just refunds we have to make back to customers. And, and what, what happens is people go online and make a payment and say they owe $50.37. They pay us $503.60. And, and so we end up having to reimburse that to those people. Uh, they also pay the city of New, uh, Newark, New Jersey. And, so we, and we get the money. And so we have to reimburse that. And that's why this is the second time I've been back for this. It really just depends on year to year how people pay things, and, and sometimes we have this particular one. We had somebody pay us over three thousand dollars, and they were supposed to owe us thirty dollars. So I thought we we're going to get through the end of the year, but you know that, things like that happen. So. Thank Motion. you. Second. Second. Mr. Bob. Second. Second, Mr. Lang. Any questions, comments from the committee? Questions, comments from the audience? All those in favor of moving this to full council, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same side. Motion carries 5 0. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair. It's okay with you not. This piece of legislation and sections are completed. I'll let Mr. Frazier take a seat for the remaining legislation. Okay. The record notes that Mr. Frazier is now present. And I'll just sit here if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Just have to be quiet. Um, our second piece of legislation is to consider resolution number 1890, appropriating monies for the current expenses of the municipal corporation. And this is uh, hereby an appropriation of unappropriated balance of the 100 general fund in the amount of $75,000. Good evening. Good evening. Our refunds this year have gone through the roof and we're out of money. This time last year we'd issued $365,000 in refunds. This year we've issued $448,000 in refunds. And my budget was only forty. dollars 4500 So in order to get this money, I asked Jackie in the auditor's office to recertify my collections this year, increasing it by $100,000, which makes it available for us to encumber it for the refunds. I make a motion. Motion, Mr. Frazier. Second. Second, Mr. Lang. Any questions, comments from the committee? Mr. Frazier. Since refunds are up, is tax collection also up? Is it kind of... They're declining. What we're, what's happening is we're beginning to feel the impacts of House Bill 5. There are three basic reasons we're having problems keeping money for the refunds is because first, people who've carried credits on their accounts for years know that they can start using a net operating loss next year, so they're asking for their money back. We have 167 companies that have opted to file through the state of Ohio rather than our office. They're paid in third quarter through last year was $489,000. Through this qu third quarter of this year, those companies have only paid us a little under $120,000. So the income is also being impacted. Also, those companies that have in chosen to opt and pay through the state, they are asking for their credits back, but they're also, if they can't pay the state directly on time, they're sending their payments to us, which means we are refunding 2018 money this year rather than next year. And the state is also refunding money and just telling us whenever they give us a distribution. So right now we've got $65,000 of approved refunds in our office waiting for funding. And today on the state's distribution, they've already issued $2,000 more worth of refunds. Yeah, Mr. Frazier. So just so that I understand the, the full complexity of House Bill 5, right? So is there a potential of the state collecting the tax we're responsible for the refund, or do we only, is that what's happening? What happens is the state automatically refunds it to the taxpayer when they ask for it, and then we have to refund it to the state. Okay. But of course they keep their fee on top of it. We don't get any of that back. You can't charge them a fee either? Nope. Okay. <laughs> any further questions, comments from the committee? Questions, comments from the audience? There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, move this on to full council. Signify by saying aye. 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 
opposing side. Motion carries 5 0. Thank, Thank you. you. That concludes the business of Finance Committee. Up next is service. Bill Cloud Service Committee meeting order. Those present are myself, Rath, Cost, Bub, Blake, and Wang. Up first, um, uh, Mr. Scott Hayes will discuss Vertical 196 uh, and their efforts regarding the homeless in Newark and Lincoln County. For those of you who don't know Scott, Scott uh, started the Lookup Center and uh, did a lot of good things with that. And now he's helping the city with a homeless problem that seems to have grown a little bit. And I asked Scott to come in tonight for two things. One, to give council an update on uh, what he's doing, which we appreciate, and two, to lead us in prayer at our uh, council tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much for the privilege to be here this evening. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to pass you some uh, handouts that you can keep and look at at your leisure. Uh, actually, I'll probably just make them available. Mm -hmm. Jeremy, if you want to just make them available. Mm -hmm. um, today was a monumental day for us because we uh, actually opened up our new daytime drop-in center for homeless um, located at 196 South 5th Street in Newark. It's the former Red Cross building. Uh, we did have 38 homeless come and have lunch with us today and get some clothing and backpacks and some other supplies. Uh, we decided because we're, we're, we pretty much operate um, solely by volunteers, it's, it's all new to us, so we do have a shower facility and laundry uh, facilities for them, but we're going we're gonna to hold off to next week to kick that off. We wanted just to, to kind of, like I said, get our feet wet and get acclimated to what we're experiencing, and it's, it's all new to us. I, I have personally worked with the homeless population for the last 18 years, but this is all brand new. And so, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've prayed through things. I've written out diagrams and different things, and I've already <laughs> made several changes this morning uh, just being open for four hours. Uh, but we are uh, operating five days a week, Monday through Friday, just weekdays. Our initial hours of operation are 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., so there's a four-hour window. We do serve lunch between 11.30 and 12.30. Um, we're also uh, providing weekly free haircuts. We have uh, several licensed professionals that want to donate their services at that. Um, we're collaborating with many local social service agencies, such as Job and Family Services, uh, Licking County Coalition of Housing. Um, we're, we're pulling some of their resources with uh, job training, hopefully uh, uh, employment placement, um, as well as services that they offer that they can sign up. And they're, they're actually going to, we're going to kind of be a, uh, like a, a, another location for them to offer their services. We also have computers, Wi-Fi. Um, every Monday we offer rides to rehab in Columbus. There's a free faith-based uh, ministry called Refuge Ministries that uh, houses both men and women. So we have a, a ladies group that meets up on our property on our property every Monday morning at 7, uh, not knowing if there's any ladies that want to go to rehab, but the, they're there in case they do, and then they'll drive them all the way to the hilltop on the west side of Columbus. And then we have the same service for men transporting men at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So um, our, our goal is to decrease the homeless population by helping them to get jobs, uh, to encourage them, to love them, and to uh, uh, just try, try to be there to, to help give them a hand up. Any, any questions that you all might have for, for me? Anything? Any question for me? Go ahead, Mr. Club. I just want to say thank you for stepping up. You know, you, you've been a doer for a long time. And You're welcome. It definitely hasn't gone unnoticed, so I, I really appreciate your efforts. And, uh, You're welcome. You, uh, you really know how to rein in the troops. And well, I, you're, you're making I'm, a, I'm a Newark boy. I've been here all my life, and I, I, I believe in our community, and, and I just uh, you know, I want to try to make any kind of help or impact that, that we can. But, we, you know, we have a very generous community. I'm, I'm just astonished. You know, I started the Lookup Center some 14 years ago, and a lot of great, generous people, but nothing like the outpouring that we've experienced just this last week. I couldn't keep up with the people dropping off donations to really to be able to minister to the to the uh, guests that were coming in. Uh, it was just, it was quite amazing. So uh, uh, kudos to the city of Newark and, and the community that we live in. Yeah. So Scott, you're operated solely by volunteers, is that correct? Correct. You know, I, I'm there. I'm, the oversight uh, organization is the Licking County Jail Ministries. Um, okay. The building itself is owned by the Evans Foundation. They've, they've gifted us the use of it, a triple net lease. And uh, so the, the jail ministries is my employer, um, but 
I'm paid to be the chaplain at the jail, so this is just kind of an extra thing that we're, that we're doing. Yeah, so there is no other paid staff at this point anyways. So if somebody wanted to volunteer there, what would they have to do? Um, they could simply contact by email my volunteer coordinator, and I could give you that information. I can tell you now if you want. Sure, go ahead. Okay. It's Mandy, M-A-N-D-Y-0-0, Lane, it's L-A-N-E, at Gmail. Dot com. Her name is Mandy Lane. She's got a couple zeros in between her names, though. Um, and she'll she'll get back back to you. Um, the number is zero zero, not O O. Correct. The number <laughs> zero zero. Confusing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Probably. Will. So, are there any prerequisites or requirements to be a volunteer? Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, I, I was uh, I was empowering some of our guests today. They were helping sweep the floor and clean, picking up trash, and I was encouraging them. Uh, you know, we want to we want to help people without uh, without totally enabling them. We 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 more like the model to empower them. So uh, sure. we will do their laundry because uh, sure. ma many homeless just have uh, maybe a change of clothes or maybe the clothes that they have on, and we have large <coughs> capacity washers and dryers, and so we're putting each individual's clothing in, inside of a mesh laundry bag and we're washing several of them together and just to keep from keep the conflicts down and keep the confusion down we're going to kind of facilitate that but but they actually come up and get their food and then we tell you know we ask them to to put their dishes um, back and you know put their trash away we don't we don't bust the tables for them we want them to really step up and and take charge of their own lives so that's kind so of so if want. somebody wanted to make a donation what type of things are you taking as far as the donation goes I assume money but yeah, no, we'll well. have an ongoing need for coffee. Uh, we really went through some coffee just this morning, uh, <laughs> today, in that four-hour window. Um, bottles of water, coffee. Uh, we have wish lists that are in those packets that you have The one, the, in, in the back pages. The one is a wish list for the center itself, kind of some needs we have there, you know, paper products, toilet paper, paper towels, uh, those sort of things. Um, but also, we give out um, backpacks full of hygiene items and uh, we also have what we call blessings bottles. It's just a small, well, it's actually a larger water bottle with a bigger neck where you can put larger um, things down in there like toothbrush, toothpaste, um, antibacterial soap, chapstick, hand warmers, uh, batteries, little flashlights, things like that that could, you know, just maybe help help them along their way. So okay. um, those are things that we need as well. Though. Any other questions from committee members? Yeah, how about financial do donations? Do you have 501c3 status or yes. the website set up? We can yeah, uh, it's through Licking County Jail Ministries website. I do have a, a man working on uh, We want to have an independent website that's just vertical 196 just, just to identify that, that uh, portion of the ministry or the programs. Um, but we are a, a 501c3 charitable organization. Uh, and and the, the name, if someone wanted to make a financial contribution, is Licking County Jail Ministries or simply uh, LCJM. Um, it can be mailed to P.O. Box 535, Newark, and the zip is 43058-0535. We also, on that jail, that jail ministries org website, it's simple, it's not the Licking County Jail. Uh, I'm not sure how we got something so generic, but it's, it's awesome for me. But it's simply jail ministries org. And there is online uh, giving capability on, on that site as well. Can you repeat that one, that address one sure. more time, a it's, little louder? Okay, P.O. Box 535, Newark, Ohio, 43058-0535. Okay, just want to make sure the microphone's picking up. I got it. Thank you. Any other questions for the committee? Mr. Blake. Mr. Chair, yeah, Scott, thank you for your work. I mean, it's, a, it's been a big concern for a long time. and. Um, you know, this piece of the pie is most definitely needed. Uh, can you, you may have already said this, but what was your hours of operation? It's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on weekdays, Monday through Friday. Okay. Any questions from the audience? Any questions at all from the audience? Mr. Frazier. Is there Mr. Any Frazier. Please, you know the rules. Okay. okay. Seeing there's no questions, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he knows he needs to go oh, to the podium oh, so yeah, the microphone's yeah. going uh, Mark Frazier, 20 West North Street, Newark, Ohio, 43055. Um, so, Scott, you're, you're pretty well informed on, on the issue. So, when it comes to the services that you're providing and the additional gaps that we see in service, is there anything to highlight there? And also, is there other items that you want to expand 
for vertical in order to help address those needs or, or what's your thoughts on the subject? Is your question, are there other unmet needs in our community? Yeah. Um, yeah, frankly, uh, you know, it's a privilege to be a part of this, but uh, at 2 o'clock this population is still homeless. Um, so I don't feel like I'm really addressing the homeless issue itself, um, but trying to um, give them a four-hour uh, a home during the day. Um, I, I see uh, t two of the biggest concerns that I've had for years is affordable housing, uh, not transitional housing, not shelters, but affordable housing as well as affordable, reliable transportation uh, to get to work. Well, those are some things that I see. I don't know if that was yeah, question yeah. Right. That's, that's part one. And part two is the the rehab facility, um, the laundry. Is there any other services that you're looking to provide mm -hmm. through Vertical as you grow and expand your services? Um, at, at this, we have some things that we're discussing, but nothing that we're yeah you know, rolling we're, out yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I want to make sure I don't like just to throw those things out unless I'm really definite. I'm going to do them. I don't want to bring false hope or yeah uh, absolutely uh, and then I, don't, I don't see it's just staying uh, complacent at that at this level and who's providing the transportation to get to Columbus to the rehab facility uh, of a van there no it's actually individuals that do that yeah perfect there's individuals uh, a lot of jail ministry volunteers are the ones that are actually uh, uh, stepping up and taking that role well so, thank you for all yeah that you do yeah, really thank appreciate you it. Thanks. anybody else have any questions yes sir Jim Young, 57 South 3rd Street. Is there, I, I realize this is a really growing problem, especially in Newark and as a Newark resident, as I've been my entire life, and I'm partial to Lincoln County. Um, is there any chance that you're giving preferential uh, priority to Lincoln County residents as opposed to those that are coming in from outside the uh, area? To my knowledge, no, but I'm not asking a lot of people where they're from. I mean, uh, in passing, I do, but um, uh, there's a few people that are telling me from they're from out of town. Okay. <coughs> but I'm, I'm treating them all the same, whether they're... That's all I needed? Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? I do have two questions for you, or, or one question, two parts, I guess. I don't know. I, I mean, I hear, I hear people talk all the time about affordable housing and affordable, reliable transportation. Can I get your interpretation of a definition of affordable housing first and then affordable transportation? What do you mean by that? Yeah, I'm thinking on the lines of the affordable housing is probably going to be um, in, the, in the way of apartments, um, probably um, they, they possibly like Section 8 housing, uh, government subsidized housing. Um, what I see is, is a, a vicious cycle of, of many people that for, for whatever reason, and there are a, a variety of reasons, become homeless, uh, sometimes struggle with um, mental health and or drug addiction. Sometimes it's from uh, devastating circumstances, uh, loss of a job, uh, loss of a spouse, uh, divorce, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, so I guess on the, on the affordable or I guess what that vicious cycle is, they, they go to a shelter, uh, sometimes they find transitional housing, they get employed, uh, sometimes they get an apartment or a house that in which they really truly can't afford, but I think that sometimes they're excited, they're running on emotion because they're no, no longer homeless or in a shelter, and then they can't afford their, their house uh, household rent or, or, or bills, and so therefore then they get evicted and, and the they come back onto the street, back to the drugs, back to jails, back, uh, back into the shelters, and so there's this, this cycle. So um, my idea of that is probably, you know, mult multiple housing uh, apartment buildings uh, to make that happen. The uh, affordable, reliable transportation. Um, at one time, we had a token service here that I think was affordable. In, fa in fact, many agencies gave the tokens uh, to that target population. Um, but I know from a, from personally uh, writing in one of those, uh, f from for me to take a taxi from here to Licking Memorial Hospital to take me an hour and a half is that's that's not acceptable. So um, sometimes it just has to be. I don't know if it's a bus uh, system with different stops or. Uh, but but as I would ride in a taxi, and I've heard many uh, responses similar. Uh, they would they would pick up another person and then they go here and drop this person off. Sometimes you'd almost go past your destination, and it's like you would never get there. So, um, I think uh, those would be key. 
Um, also, just I guess I wanted to address why why I feel um, the need to address this homeless issue is as the chaplain at the jail of the 69, 68, I guess now homeless people that I've encountered in the last two and a half months, about 75 percent of those are former inmates. So uh, once I get to talk to them, I, I realize I recognize them just for, from our jail. So I feel like that's something that we need to do, not just behind the walls, but we need to step up and try to try to help them. Uh, beyond that, because the three biggest obstacles that a that an inmate experiences upon release are housing, employment, and transportation. And so, if we can help them with any of those facets, or hopefully someday all three, I think we're going to just make better, productive citizens uh, that return to our community. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Mr. Safety Director. So. Uh, Dave Rhodes and I met with you a couple weeks ago. I'm sorry, and just so all of those who's talking. I'm sorry, Director Steve Baum. Thank you. The Director of Public Safety. Dave Rhodes and I met with you a couple weeks ago. Could you explain your employment contacts and that you do have place job placement abilities? Would you would you speak to sure. that for a minute, please? Thank you. Yeah, over over the 14 and a half years that I've been at the chaplain at the jail, I've I've uh, been able to work with a lot of employers and we now have a, a we've compounded a list of 31 employers that will hire um, folks from this background uh, whether they're felons or they're you know they're, they're former homeless or drug addicts um, that are really willing to give them a shot and that those industries go from uh, food service to construction to warehouses um, and so there's quite a variety of of employers that are, are willing to work with us so um, I'm always working to try to gain that so if you guys know of an employer that Maybe we can add to our list. That would be very, very helpful. Um, it's exciting to me. I mean, it's, it can be challenging. It's difficult. Um, you know, I suggest if a pastor wants to get into a ministry where he really sees this huge success rate, jail ministries or working with the homeless may not be that, that category. Um, but, but it is highly uh, rewarding as well. I think about uh, an electrician who's donated his time down here at Vertical to help us uh, with our washer and dryers to have power and, and for our freezer. Uh, he, he's a guy that comes from a similar background uh, that I do, which I don't know how many of you know that, but I'm, I'm a former inmate, I'm a former drug addict, and, uh, and he's a guy that I was able to help some years ago. In fact, I married him and his wife at Second Presbyterian Church, and uh, they have a little boy. He has his own electrical business. He has employees. Um, Jeremiah is the reason why I do what I do, because I keep, you know, I, I see that there is a, there are success stories. He's not the only one, obviously. Um, but there's a lot more that... Uh, tend to disappoint you that go back into the old lifestyle. And I don't mean to be Mr. Negative here or Mr. Naysayer, but, um, but, it, but it is challenging. But there are success stories with that as well. I don't mean to ramble on. No, no, no. I'm sure without your help or, or people like you that, that there would be a lot less success stories. Possibly, but I, I, have a, I have a large team. I have a team of 86 <laughs> jail ministry volunteers inside the jail. And now I'm, I'm pushing 100 on this, this new venture, and today was the first day. So I'm astonished about how many... How many people want to give? And so how you had about how, how many people did you have visit you today? Today we had 38. 38. Home, 38 I know you said that earlier. Yes, that's, that's okay. <coughs> Mr. Blake, there's a question. Scott, um, how do you see with the current shelter system in the city, how, your, your organization is now filling a void as, as it seems to me. I mean, would you agree with that? Or would you, I mean, where people are, when we're looking at the shelter system of Salvation Army or St. Vincent and you're killing, I mean, those people are having to leave at a certain time. And yes, and, and I think out of those 38, only three were from shelters today. Okay. Many of them were begging me to try to find them a house, a home. Um, so there is a need for more emergency shelters as well. Um, I'm cautious about how I say this, but, and I'm not trying to be critical, but... Um, I don't know how to say this, and I'm being recorded, but, uh, you know, sometimes uh, organizations can almost out-police their mission. So uh, m many shelters are, are putting more and more rules and policies, and I'm not against having boundaries and set limits and whatever, but uh, it's hard for me to make a phone call out of the jail and say, I got this guy or this lady that's leaving. Uh, they don't have anywhere to go um, because of the, the rules of kind of changed and they're getting a little more <clears throat> strict and, and uh, like I said I, I don't think we should just let everybody have a free-for-all I'm not suggesting that at all but um, but there's always a need for for more shelters to answer that question thank you thanks any other questions or comments 
I appreciate you coming and talking to us today, Thanks. and I appreciate all that you're doing. Please keep it up. Thank you. All right. So up next, we'll discuss resolution number 18-89, authorizing and directing the director of public service of the city of Newark, Ohio, to apply for, accept, and enter into a water pollution control loan fund agreement on behalf of the city of Newark for planning, design, and or construction of wastewater facilities, four street separation project, and designated designating a dedicated repayment source for the loan. Yeah, this is a, a legislation that authorizes us to enter into loan. Uh, this is a continuation of our long-term control plan. Um, and the next project that's going to be coming up uh, will be the 4th Street separation, which is separation in, in new water, storm, and, and sanitary lines from basically from the Catholic Church down to National Drive. Uh, and this is for this is the design loan. Uh, so this will be a five-year loan. Um, but, but our plan is to take this loan and roll it into a construction loan with the Ohio Water Development Authority uh, at the end of... 19 when we plan on bidding this job in December of, of 2019. Um, so right now, you know, this total total job is going to be somewhere around 30, lower over 30 million dollars. Uh, uh, but it, but it's this is again a requirement of uh, our long-term control plan and a mandate from a U.S. EPA to separate sewers and eliminate CSOs. So so this is just a authorization to enter into a design loan to pay to design the uh, water and sewer and storm lines. So. Any questions from the committee? Any questions from the audience? Chair, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Blake. Uh, Roger, when you when we do this and it goes into the, uh, remind me the title of the water, who you get your loan through, through the water department? Uh, uh, be the high water development. The high water. Now that understand. does not count against us as far as bond rating or anything, correct? No, Ohio Development, Ohio Water Development Authority is a quasi-government agency that manages money for Ohio EPA, who takes money, part of the uh, state revolving loan fund money, and they and they issue bonds for that. You know, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of bonds every year for all water and wastewater agencies, mm -hmm. um, and so we they will loan us this money. Actually, this this money. We're going to get uh, ten million dollars in zero percent interest money on this on this project um, to help with the CSO work. So 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 that's why we continue to go to. We, we could bond all this work. You know, we could just issue a you know issue a huge bond for this and pay it ourselves. But we can't beat the interest rate we get from here mostly because we're getting ten million dollars of free money um, with this project. So, uh, but but it's part of state revolving loan fund money uh, that Ohio Water Development Authority then manages for Ohio EPA. Thank you. Okay. You have a question from the committee? Questions from the audience? I just have one comment. Um, for people not sitting on the bench or speaking at the podium, the firemen have ladder five outside. If anybody is here and wants to take a look at it and hasn't had the opportunity, um, I don't know that they won't have to leave. So now is probably a good time to go take a look if you want to take a look. Thank you, and I apologize. I want to vote on this first, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear a motion to send this on to full council. <laughs> motion by Bub. Seconded by Cost. Any further questions from the committee? Any further questions from the audience? See none. All those in favor of passing this on to council for a vote, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That passes 5 0. Uh, is any member of the committee interested in seeing letter five outside that hasn't seen it? See that, um, if anybody in the audience would like to go out, that's great, but I know we have a lot on our agenda as far as committees tonight, so to be done by seven o'clock, I'm going to press on and unless somebody has a huge obnoxious objection to that. Good, other than Mr. Fraser that is. <laughs> Uh, next, resolution number 18-91, authorizing and directing the Director of Public Service of the City of Newark, Ohio, to enter into a contract with out competitive bidding for the repairing the traveling screen system in the south intake building at the water treatment plant. Okay, so, uh, at the water treatment plant on the, on the north end, we have um, two intake screens. 
uh, which would screen out leaves and sticks and all kinds of things before it comes up into the water treatment facility. Uh, that was uh, that was uh, installed new uh, in the 1993 expansion. It lasted for about uh, 16, 17 years. We rebuilt it seven or eight years ago with the intent of this thing lasting for another 20 years, um, and it has not. We, we, have it, we have them inspected annually. This, this device is underwater, so you can't really look at it, and so we hire an uh, underwater inspection company to come in. They dive down there and look at it. Uh, they dove down there and found some serious issues with this that we did not expect. Um, and unfortunately, we have two of these, and so we'll, we'll just use the other one. Well, they inspected the other one, and unfortunately, it's got some similar problems. Um, so these are all kind of highly unexpected for us, at least in, in this number of years. But So we do need to get the one fixed uh, before we have any major problems. That's why we're here to, to waive bidding, because we've got to get this going as quickly as possible. And we can't, don't have really time to design. And, and, and if we go with the company that we have, the prices we got from the company here, we, we can basically take the old unit out and set a new unit in, because the building's designed for a certain size screen. If i got to change companies and i got to redo the building, and it's a whole, you know, it's it's, it's and so we're a little bit uh, um, just an unexpected repair that we need. What kind of cost are we talking about? Uh, Two hundred twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. For screens. And and we do have money. We we set aside money every year. We're required uh, as part of our um, um, rate structure. We set aside about one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year for emergency repairs. And so our equipment replacement fund. Uh, there's currently close to a million dollars in that. And that's, you know, people say, well, that's a lot of money in there, but this is, this is what happens. You know, it's like your emergency fund. So right? the so funds will come out of that fund. And the funds will come out of that, that fund. Yeah. Okay. Any questions from the committee? Mr. Chair. Mr. Lang. Yeah. Um, so, so it sounds like the waiver for, of the competitive bidding is purely a, a timing issue? Correct. Correct. And so walk me through, if we were to competitive. I could interrupt. I'm sorry. Didn't you say it was also a design mm -hmm. issue if we went with a different company that well, that the ties into the time. If yeah, we we yeah, theoretically we could tear the building down, redesign a new one, and put it up there, but that'd be very time-consuming to do that. So, okay. um, and that's why we're trying to get this done in, in a hurry. So, if we were to simply take it out to bid, how long would that process take to design? Well, design is probably a you know three or four month process, uh, and then and then we got we got to get con we'd have to get a contract for a contractor to come in. Uh, that's you know. In a short time frame, would be six six weeks to a, two months. I mean, that would be like doing something in a, in a you know in miracle time frame. So we would be five six months down the road before we could get this going uh, uh, if we had to, to go to go to, to a complete bid on this. So, so what length of time from now until the end of the project to completion, if we went to bid, estimating it, of course, I know. If we went to bid, yes. Well, we'd we'd probably be. You know, start construction in six months. We'd probably be another two or three months construction. Well, if we had to, depending on what we had to do, you know, a minimum of two to three months of construction on it, and then so you know we're pushing close to a year to get get it done if we don't do something. So and if we don't take it out to bid, what's the time from today to completion? Uh, I think we can get you know it's really a matter of ordering parts, and I think uh, and what what we've been told is is uh, three to six weeks to get material here. <clears throat> Um, and that's shipping and all the other things that, that go along with that. So, um, and then the amount of time for installation. Uh, well, if we just if we use our same, um, if we do do it the way we're proposing to do it, we can get it installed in a, in one to two weeks because it's basically taking it out, putting it back in, kind of thing. So, so six to eight weeks total from initiation to completion versus six to eight months. Yep. Yeah, we follow questions. So, based on the inspection we had, how long did they give us before the the issues we've got with the current system are going to, you know, cause a, a, a real issue? Well, basically, they told us, you know, failure is pretty imminent. Okay. Now, like anything else, it, it could keep running. It it could have it could be failed right now. <laughs> Knock on wood, it's not. But they also the, said that about the dam at Buckeye Lake. So, yeah, but but they you know they inspected it and they said there is a problem. It's a problem with bearings, um, and 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 the whole thing's kind of gotten all tore up because of the bearings is the problem. So, um, it's it's not in good shape. So, 
you don't sleep well at night when you, when you know you. Once that goes, then we're going to. Go ahead and finish that statement. Because I, I'd like, that was going to be my next question is when that fails, what happens then? Well, it's our water intakes. And if you can't take water in, it's kind of hard to put water out. So, so when the screens fail, that eliminates our ability to intake. It, you'll, we will severely limit the amount of water we can put through the plant because we'd have to only take water when it's very clear, when there's no leaves. We'd have to manually somehow figure out how to keep the stuff out of the plant. I mean, I'm sure we could probably figure something out, but I mean, that'd be very labor intensive and, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, certainly we'd try to keep water to the city, but um, but would not be a, I, I don't know the complete answer to that, so we don't, we don't really want to know the answer to that, so. Uh, okay. But, uh, right. Sure. So you mentioned that the um, these seemed to fail faster than we thought they were. They were it was unexpected that we were going to be in the situation we're in. Well, based on what, based on what we what they've lasted in the past and where they're at, they, these have failed. So, so is, that, is there a potential that there's some kind of design issue that these are failing faster than we had anticipate? It sounded like because we have two and they're both seem to be. Yeah, we think shaped. we think there's a bearing issue with the uh, the way that the type of bearings they put in when they rebuilt them. So uh, it was a seal. It was as a a non-sealed bearing. It should have been some sealed bearings put in. Uh, so something we hope to correct. The something we hope to correct this next time. So. Uh, okay. um, there you go. Any questions from the committee? Any questions from the audience? <coughs> See none. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion Second. by Mr. Lang. Second. Seconded by Mr. Bob. Any further questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of sending this on to council, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Passes 5 0. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. And that concludes the service committee. Up next will be the economic development committee. All right, we'll get started. So, there's President or myself, Ranger, Rath, Cost, Hall, and Lang. Uh, on the agenda tonight is Director. Modder uh, to present the 2019 Development Department CDBG funding. So, Director. Well, good evening, and thank you, Councilman Frazier, for inviting me to come and share this. I will let you know we also had a public meeting just a couple of weeks ago where we shared this publicly right here at the table and invited anyone who wanted to participate in that and learn more about it. We did have that public hearing take place, as we're required to do, do so by HUD. The budget, you all had a copy sent to you in advance. I'll be glad to run through it. As I go through, feel free to stop, ask, ask me any questions you like or have. Uh, with that, we'll get started. The very top number, as you'll see, is the 2019 allocation that we got from, that we're anticipating from HUD. We never know until uh, usually about June or July of that year. We get an allocation amount somewhere late spring, but we don't know for sure until probably later in the summer. We're anticipating what we have received this year, so we want the same number of 754868. The second number on the budget is repaid housing loans. That $50,000 represents a guesstimate of what we think we might receive from some of our revolving loan funds that come through. We never know how much could be potentially repaid off, so we use that as kind of a forecasted budgeted number on that. The number below that is titled Reprogram Prior Year's Funds. That's a figure of 239,917. That's kind of a carryover amount, if you will. I also look at that as kind of a rainy day fund for us, as well as to help um, if maybe we have some project overruns. Uh, for example, we did a very big project out at Cedar Hill Cemetery this past year. We worked with Brian Moorhead uh, on that to put in new sidewalks along Cedar Street, uh, created a retainer wall, and on top of the retainer wall, there's fencing. And it was about a, over a two, it's about $280,000 project at the end of the day when we finished it up. So that allows us to have some money in there and, and uh, again, sort of a rainy day fund. If you add all those numbers up, we have a total available funds of $1,444,785. We take that number and we go to our expenditures listed below. The first one is the Department of Development, Economic Development, Technical Support. Basically, that number of 80880 goes to pay for the administrative staff to conduct the business of economic development in the department. So myself and our staff up there. The next item is the CIC, Community Improvement Corporation. Uh, that figure of 60000 goes to help fund all the great work that the 
uh, CIC has been doing for the city over the last several years. Um, following that, emergency slash minor home repair. That number of $5,000 is really a placeholder, if you will. It's a placeholder because we, we have to use up any revolving loan fund money that we brought in under that program first before we can use our CDBG money. So again, placeholder, put in there 5,000. We typically will do probably this year, $60,000 plus in emergency minor home repairs for citizens of Newark. Below that, housing implementation programs. Uh, that's basically salary and benefits to implement um, some of these emergency minor repair programs, demolitions, neighborhood cleanups. Uh, we're gonna have a sidewalk activity, uh, repair and replace program as you'll see further on the budget that goes toward funding that administrative cost there. Um, clearance and demo, uh, technical support, uh, that pays for administrative to conduct the demolition programs and projects that we'll do th throughout the year. Under that is the actual demolition budget of 25,000 uh, that we've put in there to do demos this coming year. Below that is code enforcement, that's gonna be a new uh, position that we're actually bringing before personnel committee a little later on this evening. Um, code enforcement can help out with property maintenance. And we used to have a full-time code enforcer in the Department of Development. Um, that position went by the wayside because we had about six straight years of budget cuts. And so we had to do away with that position. We did get a slight increase from the CDBG uh, for this year, and we're anticipating, hopefully, the same thing for this coming year in 2019. Um, Next item is street rehabilitation. You'll see $50,000 listed. Uh, majority of that money goes to help Brian Moorhead. Uh, whenever he does paving on streets, they are required to put those curb ramps that we're all familiar with now with those red mats with the dimpled uh, texture to them. Uh, we typically pay for all those curb ramps as he's going along paving streets. Uh, street rehab support, technical support, $500. Again, that's administrative cost. Below that is park improvements. Um, we work with Director Dave Rhodes and Jeff Hotchkiss really close on park improvements. Uh, we're forecasting about $130,000. We would like to use the majority of that uh, to finish the sidewalks along Cedar Street and along the cemetery and also replace the remaining fencing. So from where we stopped at the top of the hill, going north on the Manning Street, complete that. And then from where we stopped down near the entranceway, we'd like to complete that up. So that's what that figure is for. And below that, again, is just administrative cost to implement parks. Uh, together we grow. Um, the Roberts uh, people, they have that program, and we typically help them fund their program with the community gardens. Below that is sidewalk repair. That's a new item for us on this year's budget. We are looking forward to putting some money into repairing and replacing sidewalks. Uh, we're anticipating a lot of that to go hopefully toward the south end as part of the CIC's Vision 2028 long range plan for the city of Newark. We've kind of targeted the south area because they have a very strong South Newark Civic Association. They're well organized. They've already got established pride in the community that we can build upon there. And um, we want to be able to put a concentrated effort in that area and really, really make a difference and hopefully create a model moving forward throughout the rest of the city. Um, and below that is sidewalk technical support. Uh, below that, streetscape technical support. Again, that's administrative cost, $500. And then below that, downtown preservation and rehabilitation, $40,000. Uh, that is a program that we can use for downtown area uh, structures to do facade improvements. And we've done a number of buildings already downtown over the years where people have put up, uh, did mason repairs, stucco repairs, painting, and so on, some signage. And so with everything else we have going on in the downtown, we got a beautiful revitalized downtown. This certainly complements all those efforts as well. Um, and again, below that is technical support to run that program. Everything on down below that um, is uh, sub what we call subrecipients. And there's a list of those people like Behavioral Health Care Partners, St. Vincent's, Coalition for Care, Woodlands, Coalition for Housing, and so on, Canal Market, those are um, area nonprofits that we support uh, throughout the community. And I did miss the top item, the 18,000, which is alongside of landlord and tenant services. That's basically our fair housing program. And we are required 
as recipients of community development block grant funds from HUD to have a fair housing program for the city of Newark. So those are our expenses listed there. And then all the way at the bottom, the general management and oversight, that's basically administrative um, overhead cost. For neighborhood cleanups, um, is there a specific area targeted for next year that you want to use those funds for? Or? Yeah, we did, we did the um, east end. We did the north part. We did the south. Uh, we're probably going to expand in those areas, Mark, is what, what our thoughts are. Mm -hmm. But it was very successful. Um, each time we took away the equivalent of about two dumpster loads, two 30-yard dumpsters uh, at each project. So that's, uh, I think that's made a s significant impact in and then, trash and so forth throughout the, those and communities. Then to, to kind of support that, uh, when it comes to scheduling dates for those cleanups, is it contact you to ask or are those dates already set? How do we... Uh, Mark, we have not set the dates. We kind of grouped together as a staff. We also work very closely with um, uh, Director Baum's department, Joe Paul, property maintenance, and his assistant, George Carter. We all sort of group together and find out where do we want to concentrate our efforts. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So that kind of brings us down to the bottom total again um, for, our, for our total budget for 2019. Any questions by members of the committee? And those that are sitting up here on part of the committee? Jerry, you got a question? You're not on the committee, right? I'm not. I'm yeah, sorry. go ahead, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, going off of what his line, his comments were, would there be any way where you could coordinate with like the Hudson Avenue group or the South North group because they already have? You know, it'd be nice just to coordinate volunteers around when you're doing these um, dumpster, you know, having the dumpsters available. So yeah, yeah. just I don't know if there's any active civic group out east, but I know as far as the Hudson Avenue and the South North group, it'd be just a nice gesture to coordinate with them when they're doing theirs. That way. Right. Everybody can be on the same page. So, um, that, that's a great suggestion, Jeremy. I appreciate that. We're all, you know, we kind of brand new at this. We we learned a lot in the first couple. Mm -hmm. I think we got a little better at what we did and more efficient at what we did. So th that's another good suggestion. Yeah. Um, I was curious regarding the uh, landlord tenant services. Is that is that Dennis Harrington where that yeah that Southeast Ohio offering? Legal Services? Okay. Yes, yes, it is. Okay. And then one more question, Mr. Right. Chair. What when you do the um, like phase one or phase two environmental studies, where does those dollars come? Where does that come out of? That's part of the administrative. Melissa primarily does the intake, applicant intake, and does the environmental review process. Just about any of the paperwork that is required to implement those programs. Okay, I'm sorry. Where would that out of which fund? Well, it, it's it's divvied up. For example, it might be so it's just part, part of the neighborhood cleanup technical technical support. Okay. It could be under housing <laughs> implementation. Okay. Okay. Right. Everything we do to spend CDBG dollars has to have an environmental review done. That's where it all starts. Great question. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Once again, Director, thank you for your time. You're doing great work. Really wanted to highlight the work that you do and the amount of impact and the amount of dollars that really get generated to, to make the work a better place. So thank you for your effort and thank you for your staff. You're welcome. With that, thank you. we'll adjourn and go to capital improvements. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting of the Capital Improvements Committee to order. Those present are myself, Lang, Finnell, Fabutis, Rath, and Hall. Up first, we've got Resolution 1887, Appropriating Monies for the Current Expenses of the Municipal Corporation. Section 1, an appropriation of the unappropriated balance of the 335 Capital Improvements Fund in the amount of $24,045. Mr. Moorhead. Yep, this is uh, very simply a reimbursement, and we want to put the money back into the uh, Capital Improvements account. Uh, businessman Jerry McLean offered to uh, pay for the brick facing on the new bridge on uh, State Route 13, and uh, in order to get that done, we fronted the money up front to the contractor and he has reimbursed us for that. So we'd like to deposit back to where it came from. Questions or comments? Motion. Motion by Rat. Second. Second by Lapidus. Questions or comments from the committee? Questions or comments from the audience? We've got a motion. Uh, we'll vote to send this on to full council. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Passes 5-0. And that concludes the uh, Capital Improvements Committee. And I think our last committee is personnel.
It's 6.45, we'll call this personnel committee meeting to order. Those present are myself, Brian Bubb, uh, Mark Labutis, John Lang, D. Hall, Sean Fennell. The first item this evening is Ordinance 18-35, an ordinance amending the position classification pay range and department authorization tables of the City of Newark Division of Water and Wastewater by creating the classifications of project engineer and environmental systems technician within the division, setting the compensation therefore, and establishing all other positions within the division. Utilities Superintendent Roger Loomis is at the podium. Yeah, this will be, these will be two positions. The first position I want to talk about is our um, um, project engineer position we're talking about. Um, I don't know if you, many of you realize, but when we do projects, and we have a lot of projects on, on uh, lined up for the next 25 years, uh, we hire a, consult, a consultant to do the design. We also hire a consultant to do construction management. And part of construction management is have a resident engineer uh, on site. So like for the downtown project, we had a person that we paid through our consulting engineer as a resident engineer to be here full time. Uh, we anticipate that to be on almost all of our projects from now until the end of this long-term control plan, which is going to be a 25-year project. Um, so as we've looked at that, Brian and I have had a lot of discussions about what to do in these situations, and uh, uh, we have decided, and I've decided, that, uh, that we need to put on a full-time project engineer, somebody to manage these, uh, be a resident engineer for these projects for us, uh, look at uh, you know, submittals, equipment submittals, look at uh, be on site uh, to uh, kind of um, um, uh, keep track of the contractor on a day-to-day -day basis, especially on these big jobs. Um, and and so this is what this pro the project manager position is for, uh, is, is, about, is about. And we think, and I think, we can save money by doing this, by having a city employee doing this, as opposed to us paying a, a, a contractor or a, a consultant to have somebody here. Uh, we pay a pretty good uh, markup for employees that, that through a consulting um, uh, firm. Uh, this will not eliminate the complete use of construction management because sometimes we do need specialized engineering services, uh, testing, and, and uh, maybe we may need a mechanical engineer to look at some, some structural issues, uh, uh, but, but this would be a civil engineer that, that, that could uh, uh, be on site and, and, and make decisions about uh, you know, piping and, 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 uh, even, and, and road construction and all the other things that go on during a project. Um, so what we've proposed here is, is a, a, a pay position that's the same as our current uh, project manager. Um, we have a project manager that does some of the project management stuff, but does a lot of other things, uh, and, and is not an engineer, uh, but, is, but is more of a uh, uh, man managing the project, uh, managing the paperwork of a project, um, but also does plant things at the plants and other things that they have. And so, we took that person on this job. He spent most of his time downtown here, but he took away from a lot of other things we do within our department. Um, and we, and we got by, but we just can't keep doing that because there's a lot of things that need to get done that, that, that uh, all of us are kind of picking up the slack on. But, um, but uh, this, this particular project, I think, ends up being a cost savings for the city. Um, and, and, you know, one question we've talked about, or one thing we've talked about is, okay, what happens when, the, when one project's done, we've got to wait till another couple months to the next project come on. You know, there's a lot of other minor projects go on the city that this person could do. So it's not like there's not work to do. Uh, I could also assist up in, in the, uh, Brian's office as well uh, to, to get some of the work done that, that they need to get done as well. A minor amount. That's just some things that could happen in, in for, for uh, times that we, we don't think maybe he would be as busy. But during projects, you're really busy, and we really anticipate these projects to be ongoing for the next 25 years. So. Uh, when, when I started with the city, uh, back in, in, in just before I started with the city, they used to have an engineer in this position that did, that did projects for us. We rebuilt the wastewater plant. We had a full-time employee then. Engineer's office has lost a lot of employees over the years, and, uh, uh, and that position came out of that, that job, out of that uh, uh, engineer's office. So, uh, so with that, um, I'll take any questions, I guess, on that position, unless you want me to talk about the second position. Uh, we'll go ahead and... Uh, <clears throat> We'll talk about this real quick. Is there any questions or comments from the committee? Mr. Lang. Mr. Lewis, um, so I'm looking at the, the funding that you've laid out. It looks like you've got 20,000, uh, total cost of 80,000, 20 coming from the city. That'd be for the environmental. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, am I looking at the wrong one? Yeah, that's the wrong one. That'd be for the environmental technician position. This, is, this would be uh, funded, uh, uh, numbers, quick. but it's all out of water, wastewater, and stormwater funds. I think it's 40% water, 40% uh, sewer, and 20% uh, stormwater. Okay. 
So it's all out of the utility funds. What's the total cost? Uh, the total cost is going to be. I'm estimating the new positions with benefits, everything about one hundred fifteen thousand so, dollars. And, and that really depends on what kind of benefit. You know, if it's a married person, I'm not married, those kind of things get that changes up and down. So, okay. And, and so I see. I found the right. Okay. So you've got a net savings of about thirty five thousand. Right. Okay. Any further questions or comments from this committee? Does anyone in the audience have any questions or comments regarding this? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion. Motion. Well, I think the uh, the, the the job ha or the the, the um, legislation has both positions in it. Establishes the project engineer and the uh, yes. I mean, when we talk, I can talk about the environmental position if you want me to as well, and then you can. Yes, go ahead real quick. Yeah. If you will. Well, that was, a, that was a, we went back and forth on that. Should you make it all one? And then, because when do you, I mean, it was kind of a situation. So, um, as you, as you know, we have a, uh, a stormwater system in our downtown. Um, and we've kind of struggled over our first few years. Uh, several of us have taken over responsibility of that, of that position, or that work. Um, and, and that has expanded out uh, because now we have a, a special improvement district which takes care of some of the trash and some other things in an expanded area. Um, and of course, none of us really knew how much work this was going to be once we got started into the thing. You know, we got you know how much this is going to be. So, has ended up being a, a, been a pretty big job. Um, so, we have partnered originally with Soil and Water District, um, and that's. You know, we've had a lot of complaints this year about some of the stuff that's happened uh, in, in downtown with the, the, the plantings and those kind of things, and been kind of irregular and sporadic on how things uh, have gone. Um, so we've had some discussions with the uh, Special Improvement District, the administration, and we've looked at what we're spending currently. We have to pay money, you know, to, to get this done even through the Soil and Water District. And then we have a lot of separate contracts. We have a, we like, for instance, we have a guy that mows for us. And we have a guy that uh, you know that sprays uh, fertilizer and does that kind of thing. So we got separate contracts for a lot of these things. We kind of added all that money together and said, okay, you know what are we spending here? And, and really, should we have somebody in charge of it? Not really in charge of it, but but doing the work for us. One guy doing the work. I've got a lot of other things to do in the day, and, and so I've kind of been supervising that downtown thing. And it, get, it gets a little bit much as we go down uh, down the road. And we need a, a person, I guess, is what we've decided. So. We've come up with a title of a position called environmental systems technician only because that person would, would, would also be able to do some landscape, you know, check the trees, make sure the trees are growing properly, make sure the plants are pruned properly, uh, have some background in that kind of stuff where, you know, you're not just, you know, some guy off the street trimming thing. We want to make sure the things operate and work properly, grow properly, that kind of stuff, but also keep the mowing and keep the weeding and everything else. Going. So it's a, it's a hands-on job. This is going to be a... This position will be in the union. The, the, the uh, uh, project engineer it would be would not be in the union, um, but but this position will be a union position, um, and then will help manage some of the volunteers downtown, do that kind of work for us, but also do the watering, do the do the general landscaping, but also maintain the system so that you know knows when when uh, your plants need replaced and do, do those kind of things. So uh, so the funding for this then is going to be. Um, and I've got this written on this sheet here, but the funding is going to be uh, the the SID, the Special Improvement District, has has um, told us they were, they were going to spend, they're going to give us twenty thousand dollars for this position to help pay for this. They're already paying other people to do some things. They're going to pay that to the city, um, and it'll be sixty percent through stormwater, forty percent through the general fund. But part of the general fund money is going to uh, um, Hopefully, be out, of, and I put that as a maximum number. Okay, so it depends on who we hire and, what, and where that lands. So the most we can see that coming out of the general fund would be about twelve thousand dollars for this for this position. Hopefully, it's going to be less than that. But I didn't want to put something you know too low and then be high, and then we'd be uh, kind of discussing that. So, um, so that's you know, obviously that depends on what we're paying that person. If we're pay range forty, it depends if we get a new person. The person's been here a long time, where their pay range falls, and that kind of stuff. So. Um, um, so taking out some of the work we're already doing, we think it's going to be a net cost of about sixty-five thousand dollars. Hopefully, then some of the savings and would, would make up the difference, and then we'd be 
I'm not going to guarantee it to be a net neutral kind of thing, but, it, but it's not going to be a big cost to us. But we'll improve the downtown a lot and get keep this thing running a little bit better. So, does so anyone have any questions regarding the, the position of environmental systems technician? I'll make a motion to send this on to full council. Okay, there's a motion. Second, second by Labutis. Uh, Mr. Fraser, do you have a question or comment? Yeah, for this. Day. Payment of 20000 is that guaranteed year over year, or is it just the first year? Do we know what that agreement looks like? Dave talked about it. Mark, that's a fair question. Uh, the SID, the Special Improvement District, was put together to help keep up the downtown area, so that will be a year after year after year commitment. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, I have a motion by Lang. A second by Labutis. All those in favor of moving this on to full council can signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes 5 0. <coughs> best, best of luck with that, Roger. <coughs> the second item on the agenda this evening is Ordinance 18 36. It's an ordinance amending the base wage and salary table of the City of Newark for the position of street and traffic engineer with the strength authorization of one in the Division of Engineering. Engineer Brian Moorhead. Yes, thank you. Uh, as Roger said, we've talked about these positions quite a bit uh, over the last couple of months, and uh, I just wanted to try to give a little bump to the current street and traffic engineer position. Uh, it would be about a $6,500 a year annual increase from uh, where he is right now. Uh, when the position was created back in 2011, it was actually set. Uh, we had assistant engineering positions at that point. And it was set about $2,500 lower than an assistant engineer because it was envisioned that um, that person wasn't going to need all the technical skills um, uh, and they would eventually be uh, taking over the street and traffic uh, departments. And so the higher technical skills such as, you know, uh, designing plans and going through specifications and that sort of thing uh, weren't actually going to be needed. Um, it was more of a uh, management and coordination job at the street department. Well, as you know, that was under a different administration. That has not happened. We've kept our current uh, uh, street superintendent. And um, the current uh, person that's in our street and traffic engineering position has given us greater skill and technical value uh, with the things that he can do. He's a designer. He's, uh, he's does studies. He does... He does uh, uh, administration of some of our projects so he's doing a lot more than what was ever imagined and uh, he does do that high technical work and the work that he does um, has saved us from paying outside consultants to do that work more than one example is uh, Nick designed the roundabout at Sharon Valley uh, and Evans Boulevard the cost to design that would have been an eighty to hundred thousand dollars and of course he did it he did it in-house so uh, that was uh, that's that's probably one of the most uh, recent examples. So um, I guess if there's any questions, I'll be glad to uh, try to answer them. This his this rate would be about twenty two hundred fifty dollars less than the senior engineer rate that we have in our uh, in our uh, office also, and um, so it would still be a step behind the senior senior engineer position. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them. Does anyone from this committee have any questions or comments for Mr. Moorhead? Does anyone from the audience have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. Motion. Second. There's a motion on the floor by Lang, a second by Hall. Oh, I'm sorry. See no further questions or comments. All those in favor of moving this on to full council can signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is Ordinance 18 37, amending the position classification pay range and Department of Authorization tables of the City of Newark, Department of Public Safety, Division of Property Maintenance by creating the classification of Property Maintenance Code Official Rehab Specialist Supervisor and setting the compensation there for Director Baum is at the podium. So a friend of mine told me the first thing I should tell you is this isn't going to cost you any more money out of the general fund. I should lead with that. So um, this is going to allow me to loan Joe Paul to Mark Motter, and this will allow Mark Motter 
to accrue some grants and qualify for some other things that he doesn't currently qualify for because Joe Paul has a very extensive resume that he's going to let us borrow. So in return, you're going to see in Ordinance 1838 that Mark is going to hire a rehab specialist code enforcer to assist with property maintenance. So I'm going to loan Joe to Mark for a little bit during the week. Let's say he spends 20 hours working for Mark every week. But in return, he's going to hire a full-time person using grant money that is going to be able to do, among other things, property maintenance complaints, which I think everybody here on the podium has called me with probably in the last 30 days. So it's a win-win, and it allows Joe to mentor two people, expand his impressive resume. Joe's going to get a little bump. He's going to move to 60, so it's about five grand. And then we're going to bring in a code enforcer rehab specialist at about 45, which is a little less than what George Carter makes, who's currently employed as a code enforcer. But a grant funded doesn't get their AFSCME buyback, their, their pension pickup, whereas George will, because he's a union employee. Grant-funded people aren't union employees because their job could go away in a year if there's no grant money delineated to the, the municipalities. Mr. Chair, Board Board. Mr. Lake. Um, it being 7, 701, I think we need to uh, adjourn and reconvene uh, after full council. I'd like to make a motion to do that. <clears throat> okay. There's a motion on the floor by Mr. Lang. <clears throat> To adjourn, and um, is there a second? Second. There's a second by Fennell. Um, Don, may I ask you what your opinion is, Council President, on this matter? Well, if you think this is going to be lengthy, then I think that would be a great idea. If you think this is going to be passed, then I would. Okay, when you say lengthy, what do you mean by how many minutes? Are you looking like 10 minutes or five? I mean, five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. So I will leave it up to the committee. There, <clears throat> there is a motion on the floor by Lang, a second by Fennell, to adjourn this committee meeting. All those in favor can signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. Aye. So motion carries 3-2. We will adjourn, and we will be back after city council. Continue right after council. It. Okay, it is 7.30 here on uh, Monday evening. We will uh, need a motion to reconvene our personnel committee meeting, followed by a second, if anyone... So moved. Have a motion by Lang, a second by Labutis. So this personnel committee meeting will continue. Is Director Baum in the lobby? I'll be glad to step in for him. Okay. I didn't, if he has anything else, he can come back in. Mark, if you have any questions, or, or go ahead if there's anything you want to state. Real, really nothing other than maybe, again, it's a win-win-win situation where it allows us to cross-train. Um, really not a burden on the general fund. We're using CDBG funds to pay for this. Um, it allows us to cross-train. It gives us additional manpower and property maintenance where it's sorely needed, and in my department as well. Um, we're down a rehab specialist supervisor um, over the last couple of years, and also the economic development coordinator. Those two positions have been gone for several years, and I've picked up the slack for both of them. So I'm doing both those jobs and my own job. So we, we certainly need the help in DOD as well. Thank you. Is there anyone on this committee that has any questions or comments for either Director Baum or Director Motter? Anyone from the audience? If not, I will, I believe we don't have a motion from earlier. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So I will entertain a motion. Motion. Okay. Motion by Lang. Second. Second by Labutis. All those in favor of moving this on to full council can signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Next item, 
Ordinance 18-38, submitting the pay range and department authorization tables of the Department of Economic and Community Development for the position of code enforcer, rehab specialist, and setting compensation. Therefore, Director Motter, is there anything you want to say? Yeah, this, this ordinance, in addition to creating the position of code enforcer slash rehab specialist, is also going to abolish two positions I actually just mentioned a moment ago. That is, the rehab program supervisor position uh, has been uh, eliminated and deleted, as well as the economic development coordinator position. Uh, we are uh, eliminating that as well. So that's probably part two to this legislation. And again, part one is just to bring on some additional help for both property maintenance and Department of Development. Questions or comments from anyone on this committee? Mr. Chair. Mr. Lang. So if you could just walk, walk us through the funding. You explained this. Is there, there's a net zero cost. I think Mr. Baum had led with that, or Dr. Baum had led with that. If you could just walk us through how, how we get to a, a zero balance on, on this the overall program. Well, right. So, so we've put in our budget that I just went over a few minutes ago, uh, the funding for wages and benefits for this additional position. And that will be divvied up between some time that Joe Paul will help in the department and also um, the code enforcer. Um, the, the nice part about this is that with CDBG funds, that individual in that position of code enforcer has to stay in the low to moderate income portions of our city. Okay? So that position, for example, we could not use CDBG funds to have that person go over off a of country club drive exit. Uh, and do work over there. By allowing that person to float in and out of those areas, just the time that they spend in low to moderate income areas, they'll have to very carefully document that, their time spent. And so that, John, that's how we're going to divvy up the, the, uh, the um, payroll part of that. But again, it gives us a lot of flexibility, a lot of flexibility. So I think we're going to be able to cover more ground, do more work, and help out both departments. Any other questions or comments? Anyone? D. Hall, go ahead, and then Jeremy yeah, Blake. Just real quick, uh, will this person have a set number of hours per department, or that's just kind of determined as you go with the problems? And mm -hmm. Good question. I think we're going to flex it. It's, okay. it's a little bit new. Yeah. Um, what is known, D, is there's plenty of work out there. There's plenty of work. So it'll be a matter of um, just good coordination and um, directing the manpower where we need it the most. And that's going to flex. Thank you. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Will, for all these positions that we're creating tonight, will there be job descriptions on, for, for I mean, besides the legislation, is there actual job descriptions for these? There are. I have actually a copy right here. So they're, they're on file with Director Buskirk in his office for both of those. Okay. Any questions, comments? See none, I will entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Okay. Got a motion by Labutis. Second by Fennell. See no further discussion. All those in favor of moving this on to full council can signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Uh, good Thank luck you. with this. Thank you. I have a copy. <laughs> and with that, it is 7.35 and we will adjourn.